Hyperpolyglots. If you've spent any time on YouTube, you've probably seen them. Well, you asked for it, and finally, here it is. Today I'm going to expose the tips, tricks, and techniques YouTube polyglots use to perform proficiency, to give the illusion of fluency. Some of these are great tips that'll help you gain confidence speaking your target language. And some are the tricks of the charlatan, the sleight of tongue of the confidence man. I'm not going to go over all the obvious things like reading prepared remarks from a teleprompter or deceptively editing your audio together or recording it later over B-roll. Some of that's just smart production anyway. Now I'm going to go over the top 10 ways to appear more skilled than you actually are. These are things we'd all agree are deception. Number six is my favorite, but I think number 10 will surprise you. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Taylor Jones. I have a PhD in linguistics from the University of Pennsylvania, which I'm pretty sure I'm contractually obligated to mention at some point. And I'm a linguophile who was first drawn to linguistics out of equal parts desire to speak all the languages and interest in all the interesting and weird quirks of language. Take a moment to like and subscribe and let's get into it. This is Language Jones. Hyperpolyglots. Without a doubt, there are people out there who have impressive skills. People who can speak multiple languages at a very high level. But this is YouTube, where there's money to be made, or so I'm told. Why spend years of effort struggling to memorize hundreds of thousands of words, train your ear, and teach yourself to move your mouth in weird configurations, when you could fake it? Now, a disclaimer is in order. I think those videos where someone speaks a language that you don't expect them to speak by looking at them are fun, they help inspire people to, to learn languages that they didn't think that they otherwise could. And they also challenge unconscious bias and prejudice. All good things. But they often sell us on the idea that it's quick and easy. And they oversell the YouTuber's skills. And more often than not, they're a marketing tie-in for a product or service that claims that you can learn any language in six months or three months or three weeks or one week. The result is that viewers are parted with their money and end up discouraged that they don't achieve dinner party fluency in three months or six or whatever. So what follows is a grab bag of tricks that people use. I'm not gonna name names, but I am gonna give you the viewer the top 10 ways to fake polyglottery. You'll do even better if you mix and match them. Number one, memorize the basics. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but then hear me out. Just stop there. You don't have to learn Chinese, you have to learn enough Chinese that your aunt introduces you to people who don't speak Chinese with, this is my nephew, he speaks Chinese. You won't be tested on your new skills, and if you are, you'll have some basic phrases to fire back with. Might as well do this in a bunch of languages for YouTube. The main thing is to really sell it. Act like you're improvising and not repeating canned lines from your textbook. Act like you've discovered that your interlocutor's culture is secretly the best culture. Here's an example. I study X because I like X culture, especially the food. Okay, so maybe this doesn't always work. Studio Italiano perché mi piace la cultura d'Italia. Soprattutto il cibo. Mi funde i sisulu, gomme di tande isco le sisulu. I kakulakasi u gusha. Ani lil modi vrit, ki ani o hev talbuti hudit, be me ochad ha ochel. Mandoram farsimi chunam, chun farhangi erano cheli dustoram, be chosus kazo. You get the idea. Number two, pick a language you've done this in, memorize a few basic conversational frames, and just railroad the shit out of people. This is a preferred tactic of basically every YouTuber whose screen name is transliterated Chinese. That's your Laos, your Xiaos, and so on. But not your Da, not Dashan, that guy is legit. Conversational frames are basic conversational patterns. Any introductory textbook will teach you a few. A phrase book will do in a pinch. Example. Vous jivyotes dix, nantem gordia, riadem, de loco, ni de loco, maladiez, horosho. It works best if you ask questions and seem genuinely interested. You don't have to understand the response, just ask another question in a vaguely related manner to the first, and it'll look like you're having a real conversation. Vous student? Što vous dites? Vam te nravitsa? Atkuda tvoja zemlja? Number three, learn to stall. This is one of my all-time favorites. The last two are still kind of time-consuming, and they're very basic. What if you could sound intellectual without having to know how to say anything? 
When I did my undergrad at the University of Toronto, I used to hang out at a French cafe, Crepe Gogo for life, and a friend of mine decided it was easier to learn filler than to learn French. And he got away with it like 80% of the time. It worked best as a response to questions. Quelle heure est-il? C'est une bonne question. Je me la demande souvent. C'est, on peut dire, la question éternelle. Laisse-moi réfléchir. Bah, oui. Alors, euh, voilà. Bah, voilà. He would just kind of cycle through these responses. If that didn't work to get the other person to say something, he'd start to quote a famous French figure, but just kind of trail off. C'était, je crois, peut-être, si je ne trompe pas, Albert Camus, qui a dit, bon, uh, c'était sur ce sujet, selon lui, uh, vous savez, uh... Number four, choose related languages. If you're actually gonna study a language seriously, ew, you might as well maximize your return on investment by getting to know its sisters. It's weird how we talk about languages. Learning Spanish? Learn Italian. It's basically just bouncy Spanish. Might as well learn French then, since obisogno and j'ai besoin are basically the same thing. And since you're already doing the nasalized vowels and you might as well then learn Portuguese, which is just Spanish spoken in French. Bonus, it's a twofer, if you count Portugal. It's even better if you pick ones related to your native language. I once studied Dutch for two months as a prank on a Dutch neighbor. It's the closest language to English, but they lie and tell you it's hard. His mother was going to visit from the Netherlands, and I just mainlined Rosetta Stone for two months back when I worked for them. Side note, I worked for them in Grand Central Terminal in New York City, and if you want to know about that, and trust me, you do, leave me a comment. Anyway, in Dutch, all the words are the same, but you replace the normal word, het normale woord, with either a Dutch accent or the silliest synonym you can think of in English. You don't walk, you lope. You don't talk, you brat. The only thing I could never get any Dutch people to understand is that when they ask me why I learned Dutch and I say, ik vind het erg grappig, I find it silly, they keep trying to correct me to leuk, which is just cool when you play the record backwards. Number five, choose languages with simpler phonologies or with sound systems closer to your own. It's a whole lot easier to sound like you speak Hawaiian than to sound like you speak French, because Hawaiians have the good sense not to have u and e and er. Flip side of that is pick one that has fewer conjugations and declensions. Don't go with Hungarian with all its case endings when a Mandarin verb is one and done. I ran, wo pao bu. I run, wo pao bu. I will run, wo pao bu. I will have had run. Go ahead and guess. Number six, choose languages that fewer people in your audience speak. That way they don't know if you're doing it right. Notice I didn't say fewer people. Two billion people speak Chinese, but you're not trying to go viral on Weibo, are you? Conlangs are a great example. That's your Volapuk, your Esperanto, your Navi, and my favorite, Klingon. Here's how it works. Be honest. Did you know that that was modern Hebrew, not Klingon? How many people can tell the difference between Yashkoach, Kolakavod, and Kaplach? Number seven, edit deceptively. Voice over. Do as many takes as you need. Bechrech. Be. Bechrech. Ha. Number eight, play to your audience's biases. Studying Mandarin? Why bother finding native Mandarin speakers at your local university when you could go to Chinatown and get a number one and number two combo. Use your knowledge of basics to railroad Fujianese people in Mandarin, which is probably their fourth language. My favorite example of this wasn't a YouTuber, but someone I know who insisted on speaking French in a restaurant in France. It was an Indian restaurant. They spoke English natively, along with Hindi, and French was the waiter's fourth and weakest language. That was just nerves, but imagine weaponizing that. Number nine. Pick languages that are spoken in cultures that express feedback and criticism indirectly. There's a reason you see YouTube polyglots speaking Mandarin, but not Russian or French. Russians and Frenchmen will tell you that you're doing it wrong. Oh non, mais arrête! Ton français est terrible! Tell me in English! Oh la! Chinese speakers will save face by saying you speak standardly. If anyone says you speak more standardly than even they do, it's a way of keeping the conversation moving without betraying that they have no idea what you just said. But of course, you'll have no idea that they said that. Just keep asking them questions. 你是哪国人? 你住在哪里? 你是学生吗? 
Finally, for the outright con man, number 10. Use IPA or a recording and imitate a native speaker. You have to trust that you're saying what they told you you're saying, but you'll sound fantastic. For best results, mix and match these. It works so much better if you intersperse B-roll of yourself studying and a long monologue about how much the language means to you or how much learning languages in general means to you. In English, of course. So there you have it. The top 10 tricks of the hyperpolyglot trade. Do I think everyone does these? No. Do I think those who do are doing so intentionally? Not always. But the fame, accolades, and clout can be addictive and everyone loves a worldly, sophisticated polyglot. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave me a comment. It's great for the algorithm. Let me know which of the top 10 are your favorites, or if I missed any. I have a Patreon as well if you'd like to support the channel. Support for this channel comes from viewers like you. There's different tiers, and one of them will get you a signed copy of the book that I'm currently working on. So that's exciting. Anyway, I've got a lot more content in the works, including reaction videos. Until next time, ciao. Arrivederci. Tschüss. A la prochaine. Dos vidania. Y Bye, Like a zen. Hold on,